Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to show you how we take care of our roses in between bloom. And we're also going to show you what we do when the roses develop fungus. And to help me do that, I'm going to have my husband David uh, show you how we do it. I hope that this video is useful to you and I hope that you enjoy this video. Hi everyone. Uh, Taylor has asked me to kind of tell you what our procedure is to take care of the roses. Roses are very actively growing and they do need to be fed periodically throughout the year. They're also, in our particular environment, we have a lot of problems with disease We're near the coast and we have a lot of fog and we maybe get two or three sunny days a week and the rest is overcast. That's a great uh, environment for different types of uh, problems. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, that's the typical black spots on the leaves. And if you can uh, see it a little bit back behind here, we're starting to develop a little bit of what's called powdery mildew. Uh, just a very small amount there, but it can get to be a very big problem and it can grow very, very fast. So what we generally do to help uh, control the uh, insects and the fungus on the plants is we feed them um, at the beginning of the year after I've gone through and I've actually pruned them all down for the winter. We'll actually use this product. We'll sprinkle it in. It's a fertilizer, it's an insecticide, and it's a fungicide. And we'll sprinkle it in on top of the uh, bark and let the rain just water it in. And then once the plants start to grow in the spring, they actually absorb this chemical. And this chemical is a systemic, which means it's carried into the plant through its roots and into the uh, new branches. And it'll keep the insects uh, from uh, finding them very tasty. And it also helps keep the uh, uh, fungicide or the funguses from uh, spreading. Helps control it really, really well. So that's why we use this. Uh, we've tried to do other methods, but this one seems to work best. There's other products that are similar to this. We picked this up at Home Depot. You can get it on Amazon or your nursery as well. Anyway, what it says to do is to sprinkle a little on the roots and work it into the soil. We really can't do that anymore. And we found this really not that necessary. We just sprinkle it in on top of the bark and then we water it in. Now, when do you want to do it? As I mentioned, at the beginning, after you've pruned it all down in spring before they're starting to uh, break the, the buds are coming out. And then usually after the first flush of uh, roses, you need to deadhead the roses. And after you've done that, as you can see, Tudor has done almost all of it now because we've got through that first flush of flowers. That's a good time to do it again because you'll see new growth coming up from your cuts where you've deadheaded you want those to be protected. So this is a good time to do it. And it's a simple process. Once you get the thing open, child proof, adult proof. I like to just put some in the cap, that way I can control it a little bit better and then just kind of sprinkle it lightly all around the area. And then we will watered in. Occasionally, especially later in the year, we have problems with the fungus and insects that starts to get to be a bit rapid. And uh, this same chemical, without the fertilizer, is available as a spray, a two-in-one spray, a two-in-one uh, treatment, rather than a three-in-one. And uh, we'll actually use a hose sprayer to spray the plants, and that helps control it as well. By the way, this isn't just for roses. You can use this on a variety of flowers, but you do not use it on food crops. You might have noticed a few of the roses have uh, bags on them. That's because Theodore and I are uh, actually just experimenting with hybridizing some roses. Uh, we're just kind of curious to see 
what we would get if we combined a couple of different parents of roses that we actually personally like. So stay tuned. Sometime next year, or the year after, we might have a new flower to show you. All right, and then that's uh, done. The next thing you want to do is just water it in, give it a good soaking. Um, I toss the fertilizer on and the systemic and insecticide, and it's granular, so you'll end up with a lot on top of the plant sometimes. So I like to just go through and shake it off, make sure it's all off, because you don't want to get the uh, fertilizer wet on the plant itself, because uh, the residue will actually burn the leaves. So yeah, I want it to all fall onto the ground. And then as much as possible, I don't really want to water the plant itself. I want to water the ground where the fertilizer is. Because that extra moisture, if you're wetting the plant, is going to encourage the fungus. So this is just a long process. And that's it. You're done. found this video helpful and useful to your gardening. I'd like to thank David for his helpful uh, work today. Uh, please remember to subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.